Hey everybody, it's Jillian. Good morning. It is a beautiful Monday. Um, yeah, wow. I just, it was actually last night I was finishing up my section on matching the 12 different systems and the 12 different Olympian gods and trying to match up what the gods represented and what the systems in the body represent. So people can see the connections between your biochemistry and the gods that were on Olympus way back when and probably still even today. But uh, we're definitely riddled with a lot of stuff going on in the world. And I'm trying to figure out, like with the the 12 Illuminati, you know, or 13 Illuminati families, 13 bloodlines. They call it satanic bloodlines, but I don't want to say every single one of them is satanic because they're also believing in life or we wouldn't be alive. So there's that duality. But I'm trying to figure out this whole thing with J-Juice and this whole immortality and then looking at where the 13 bloodlines are. And wow, if, if you are doing J-Juice... You are doing, you are like heads and shoulders above so many people out there that deem themselves to be some kind of deity or guru or whatever. And I'll tell you what, it's a great feeling, especially since I remember, I remember having to deal with my PMDD that was not very well known back in the 90s, 2000s. I think the 2000 decade, 2001 to 2010 was probably the hardest decade for me because PMDD was so new and people, hey Emily, and people were like, they weren't dealing with it. So they thought I was crazy. They thought I was nuts, bipolar. Um, I don't know what, man. And and, and it would it cause me to do some like just trippy things. Like, I mean, I when when you're dealing with a sickness that no one really understands or knows about it's like it's like a chronic condition that nobody can see like fibromyalgia like they're like oh you don't look sick as you're in pain or oh you you should you don't look sick but you're t you're like tired you're so tired for a couple of days and that's what i've been feeling whenever i deal with with a new variant i would be so tired i can only imagine if i worked in corporate america what it'd be like working in corporate america and that's what people are dealing with right now that that have either got the vaccine or dealing with COVID, the long haulers are dealing with fatigue, just constant fatigue. And they're not even doing J-Juice. Imagine you doing J-Juice, at least you get a bounce back. Okay, great. You take your couple days that you need, and then you, you can get back on, on the horse again. But back then, before all of this, and I'm dealing with PMDD every fucking month, and, and I'm missing family events, I'm missing friend events, I'm you know, missing days of work here and there. And I really, and I did so well those two weeks. And then the two weeks, man, I just fell apart. And nobody understood. They're like, oh, go see a doctor. Go see a doctor. They'll be on Prozac. No, that's not going to happen. And so, so now it's kind of like, for me, I kind of feel vindicated. And then I know the ones that were like, thinking that I was crazy and I'm stupid and I'm like, you know, not stable. Well, now they're dealing with chronic conditions. And I, and I hate to say, I hate to f feel gleeful, but a part of me does it. I'm going to be honest with you. Part of me is kind of happy that those that used to make fun of me, those that used to just, just um, look down on me because I was dealing with that shit. Now they're dealing with chronic conditions, autoimmune conditions that I wish they would reverse but they're not going to listen to me because they've made fun of me for so many years. They've turned people against me. They've whatever. And, and it's like these people that I used to know for a long time that I grew up with and fine, you know what? So now, you know, the virus and all of your belief systems are going to kick you in your ass and bite you in your ass, but, but you'll never apologize to me. I know that. And you'll never admit you're wrong because you think you're right. And so fine, you will have a very predictable life. And then I can actually, like, I could sleep at night. I could, I could, like, just, I could feel good about everything that I'm doing and know the amount of good in the world that I'm giving to the world, not, you know, playing the game that they're playing. And, and that's kind of the human part of me is just so happy that I've discovered Jeju, so happy that I understand what sickness is. It's evolution. So happy 
that I've stuck it out. And, you know, and so I, so I understand what's like for those that have COVID and I feel for you guys that have COVID, they're not doing J juice and you're trying to tell everybody I'm sick and they're not believing you because you don't look sick because it's like when you're so tired, you can't move. When you're so tired, you look, I mean, you see me when you're so tired. I mean, I'm telling people that deal with chronic fatigue, nobody understands them either. Like, just like PMDD, nobody understands PMD or chronic fatigue or whatever. Because it's not like you have these big welts and boils and, and you're, you're getting a diagnosis at a hospital. Unless you go to the hospital, but if you don't even believe in doctors and you never went to the, like, I never really went, I, the only time I went to a doctor was when I had, it was so bad in 2003, it was getting in the way of my relationship in San Francisco and so I went to Kaiser because I was, I would have bouts of crying where it just came out of nowhere. And my, my boyfriend at the time was like, what the hell is wrong with you today? <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'm just, and it was like such an emotional roller coaster dealing with such fucked up hormones. And so those that are dealing with COVID-19 are going to be dealing with, it, especially if they, if they haven't dealt with their, with their imbalances. So all the neurological things and psychological things and a potential bipolar and, who knows what's going to come up when you get innovated with new variants that your body is not caught up to. And it's going to have PMDD-like symptoms like I experienced. And it was fucking hell, I'm telling you. And trying to get, convey that to a world that is a, that, that can deal with the COVID, that can bounce back. And some people don't bounce back. Some people are stuck in that loop of trying to evolve to a new to a new variant and their body can't handle it. And then they're trying to to make it and, and trying to be, you know, competitive in a world that is unforgiving, especially in the corporate world. It's unforgiving. And so it just when I read that article and I'm just like, it reminded me of those days. It reminded me of me just like not even caring about hanging out with the, the family that I had at the time because I didn't have it within me to even play the games that they played. You know, be all like, I don't know, man. I was just saying, okay, I was just running, trying to run from all of my issues and get lost in the distractions of which then people are like, oh, they looked down about you. Oh, you're always going to the bars and having a bunch of boyfriends and whatever. I'm like, it was the only way I can escape that fucking hell. But people don't understand that. And I understand it. So when you're out there using and abusing and doing whatever, I get it. You're trying to escape your hell. Now, I wasn't using and abusing, but I had my own distractions. I was always going to the dance clubs, the bars. You know, I had a, a few boyfriends here and there. I had some fun, yes. Um, but that was my way of escaping. So some of us pick our vices to escape the hell that we're in. And then others look down upon it. And, they have, and they've dealt with drugs and all that stuff. So they should understand what it's like to try to escape your body when you're dealing with, you know, AA, NA, and all these different things. Oh, but no, if it's not a sanctioned disease that everybody can accept that is like been diagnosed in a freaking book, then you're just stupid. You're, I mean, nobody wants to be an outcast. That's what people understand. Nobody wants to be lazy. Okay? It's, it's, and the body breaks down the body starts to break down and the body's trying to evolve, you can't help but be what you are. And then you're going to do things to try to escape it because there's, you have no other way of coping. And so now that we understand what sickness is, guys, thank God you guys know. Thank God for the fucking J-Juice. Thank God because now you understand. Now people in your world that don't understand anyways about sickness and about J-Juice, they're going to think you're nuts. They already do with me. And so I, I, it's just more of the same on my end. I, I, my life hasn't really changed in my family out there in California. Um, here in Ohio, they I mean, not everybody understands me, but they understand mostly about me. So it's 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 because they've made a they've made an effort. You know, I'm around. They see me. They talk to me. Whatever. You know, but people, my friend, friends and family in California, you know, <laughs> no, they're they're too busy in their compartmentalized freaking formulaic lifestyle. They don't give a shit. Hey, Darla. <laughs> okay. And so they're dealing with all of their issues, totally, completely just thinking I'm crazy, which is fine. And so I'm used to, to feeling crazy. Okay. But I'm not. I'm used to, well, not feeling crazy, but I'm used to people thinking I'm crazy. But... I want you to understand that when you are doing the JGs, people are going to think you're nuts. They're going to think, why would you induce sickness? Why would you induce evolution? Because I'd rather you induce it now and you have the means to 
if you can set up your life where you have the time to heal, you do it. So that way, 10, 15, or 5 years in the future, you have reversed your major ones and you will never have to deal with it again and you'll never have anyone look at you crazy again. And then because I get the weirdo label sometimes. Yeah, oh yeah, Emily, I understand. And so that's why you do the J-Juice. If you induce the, the, the evolution, the pain now, and you understand it, and you just give yourself the time and the rest, you're, the people around you that make fun of you, that think that you're crazy or whatever, they're going to be aging and degrading them with chronic illness, and, and they'll be going to the hospital, they'll be doing all their, their different chemotherapies, and they're going to be actively accelerating the death process, and you will be actually increasing your life process. You'll be coalescing everything. And then you're going to have, you're going to do amazing in your job. You're going to do amazing in whatever you put your mind to. And you'll have the presence of mind to do everything. You're not going to be turning to all the different things that they turn to that are eventually going to destroy them anyways. And so, yeah, I've been very vocal about, you know, about all the different drugs and weed and cannabis and, and chemotherapy and all the different, um, remedies out there and i know many people in california do all that stuff and so me talking against it puts me even more <laughs> on the sidelines still yet again it hasn't changed in my life but you know what i was never meant to really be part of the mainstream and i realize that now but i remember the suffering the evolution of the people in my world in california really really i mean yeah you know if you can be normal for a minute and all of your drugs and alcohol and 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 whatever that you're doing and all of your affiliations and all of your little groups that you join and clicks and whatever but in the end you're going to be suffering even more so because of what you do to other people denying their existence that something is going on and by judging them and that's 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 what I'm kind of feeling great about is that I'm finally vindicated. And Krista goes, we're nuts. We're healthy. I just ignore that people don't know how amazing. Oh, yeah. And so and so here's the thing. So that that's my vindication is knowing that I have this juice that, yes, you'll go through your healing process. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Back before the JJ's when I was doing my PMDD and I was dealing with things people could not see, they could not understand. It was a suffering like no other. It really was. And I can see why people off themselves. I can see why people turn to drugs, alcohol, and distractions, and sex, or run away, or do whatever, because they can't escape what's in them. They can't escape it. And that's what you have to understand. Is that So the COVID people, they're dealing with long haulers. Not everybody deals with all the COVID symptoms like these people, like where they're trying to convince people, that, yeah, I'm, I'm sick, or I'm evolving. We can't say evolving, really, people out there. But, you know, you, there's... You, you can't really explain to them. There's no way to do that. You can't even, and they won't understand it. Especially when half the, the country is evolving and taking to the evolution, at least, you know, curing themselves and they don't feel anything. The other half of the country is like, holy shit, my body wants to evolve and they're trying to evolve and they can't. And so they're in constant pain. And then you have that same thing again. One side of it is like, fuck you guys. You guys are stupid for feeling all your pain. The other side is, is fuck you guys are stupid for not understanding and you have that division again. That's what's insane. And so now finally PMDD is known, is more well known, thank God. But guess what they guess all the suffering when it first came up and people had this disease that has this weird imbalance that nobody understood. And will the people in California apologize to me? Oh hell no, they will not, they will not. And that's fine. I don't really need an apology, really. But I just want to express my, my feelings of satisfaction, vindication, and sometimes you have to go through that hell. And that eventually you're going to prove what you're doing that people think is crazy is actually worth something. But it is the hell that you have to go through. My Dr. Phil was the hell. Being attacked by the press, being attacked by the trolls was the fucking hell that I went through. But guess what? It, it made me who I am today and it made me stronger. And now those that are making fun of Jilly Juice or making fun of my PMD back in 2003, well, they're, they're, they're going to deal with their shit. And I'm not going to be the one telling them they're stupid when they're, when, they're, when they're feeling it and nobody understands. Or they'll be lucky enough where everybody understands and then they're just suffering. 
trying to take all their different therapeutics until there's nothing left. But whatever. I just was like, oh my God, when I read that article, or saw the, the headlines, I'm like, this reminds me of freaking PMBD. Nobody can understand what PMBD is like. Because even the women back then, not all of them felt the way I felt. And they're like, you're stupid, or it's all in your head, or just get up, just deal with it. Just I get up every day when I have my period. I'm like, fuck you. Oh, I wanted to say that to some of the women out there. Fuck you. You don't know what it's like when you have PMBD and you have such a aggressive two week two week issues where you're eating I was on a cycle of just eating so much bloated and then I'm up all night sleeping all day I mean it was oh my god oh my god thank god you know now I'm just even now I'm just even I'm not in a hurry to do anything unless I'm on a deadline but I don't have too many deadlines you know make my husband's lunch and do his coffee and certain things that I make sure that he gets taken care of and he's on a deadline, right? Because he has a schedule. But other than that, I'm not on any deadlines and I'm 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 really methodically going through this book, going through what I'm trying to achieve and and I'm also evolving at the same time. Okay? And I set up my life that way because I know what it takes as far as the J juice. And so, you know, I just wanted to give you guys that little slice of the life that still probably, I still feel it inside about all that shit, but it's not as, 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 I mean, that article triggered me into remembering it, but it's not as profound. I mean, I, I understand why people think the way they do. If it doesn't happen to them, they won't understand it. So I get it until it happens to them. Then they understand it, but then it's too late. You just fucked up the relationship because you didn't understand when you, when you could have a long time ago, but then maybe I fucked up the relationship too, because I didn't know how to articulate everything. But who, who does? Everybody has some sense of responsibility. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go back and be like, what, what could I have done when I was sick, you know, to make them feel better? It's, it doesn't even matter. You know, not everybody's meant to have relationships. But I just want you guys to understand that's, you know, that's what it's like to have COVID-19 is when you're dealing with PMDD and no one knew about it or understood it. And if they did, people were thinking they were crazy. So, well. If people, if, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyways, all right, you guys have a good day. Bye.